What is up everyone? It's Javier with the Image Defiers, and today we're going to be covering kind of a different issue. Not really a pop culture slash media issue, more a political issue. But that's okay because I did say in my little update video that I would be covering political topics here and there that interest me. So the topic we're going to be talking about today is Houston Representative Dan Crenshaw wants Olympic athletes who protest during the national anthem expelled. So let's go ahead and look at this article from the Houston Chronicle made by Jeremy Wallace. So U.S. Representative Dan Cranshaw said Monday that he wants athletes who disrespect the national anthem and the country to be removed from the U.S. Olympic team and barred from the 2021 Tokyo Games. During an interview on Fox News Channel, a Houston Republican and retired Navy SEAL said he's done with athletes such as hammer thrower Gwen Berry, who was not attentive during the playing the anthem during the Olympic track and field trials in Eugene, Oregon. I'm assuming that's what O-R-E means on Saturday. Barry finished third in her event, winning a spot on the U.S. Olympic team. Afterward, as the anthem was being played, she turned away from the flag to face the stand. Barry then pulled a t-shirt over her head and said, Activist athlete. She should be removed from the team, Crenshaw told Fox and Friends viewers on Monday. The entire point of the Olympic team is to represent the United States of America. Crenshaw said other athletes have disrespected the nation they are competing to represent. They should be removed, he said. They should be the be that should be the bare minimum requirement. You have to believe in the country you're representing. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and look at this video because it's very short. It's uh, 36 seconds. So let's uh, go ahead and see what he actually Back says. Back on the flag during the anthem. And she mm -hmm. also put a black T-shirt over her face that said, uh, activist athlete. We don't need any more activist athletes. I, I, you know, <laughs> she should be removed from the team. The entire point of the Olympic team is to represent the United States of America. Right. It's the entire point. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing when these NBA players do it. Okay, fine, we'll just stop watching. But now the Olympic team, and it's, it's multiple cases of this, they, they, they should be removed. That, that should be the bare minimum requirement is that you, is that you believe in the country representing. But look, she turned her back on the. Okay. So let's go uh, back here. So, so here's the thing. We're going to first discuss this. This arguably is a form of cancel culture. Could be, right? Because he wants her career he wants her out of the team and barred from the games, which means that she, he wants her career done because she is not respecting the flag. Now, this whole argument, this whole debate about respecting the flag and stuff can be said for another thing. But the thing is, is that, you know, we hear a lot of people from now. Now, with cancel culture, this is what I should start with. With cancel culture, I'm also not a fan. You know, I, I, I'm do not like cancel culture at all. I think trying to ruin someone's life, take away their career, take away their possibility of a great future over something they said that maybe wasn't even that bad, like it was just maybe slightly derogatory at best, that they said maybe 10 years ago. Yes, I think that's silly. I think it's dumb. You think all these people who do support cancel culture and participate in it don't have skeletons in, the closet, in their own closet? They definitely do. They so totally do. So I, yeah, I'm not a fan of cancel culture. Uh, there is there is differences though, because sometimes people call cancel culture that isn't cancel culture. Like the whole thing with with Matt Gates that, that I've been hearing about. That's, that's people saying that's cancel. That's not cancel culture. That's not cancel culture. If you have, you know, very credible um, stories, very credible witnesses about something terrible you did, which I believe with Matt Gates is regarding uh, sexual misconduct or assault or whatever. If those like, allegations are true, that's not cancel culture. To me, cancel culture is when y your career is being threatened or ruined over something very tiny you did that maybe you don't even believe in anymore. You know, so so there's these different levels. But basically, the, the, the general understanding of cancel culture is that you're, someone's there's a group of people who are trying to ruin some a single person's career or livelihood uh, ability to, to make a living even sometimes over something slightly derogatory they may have said m even many years ago. It could be recent or it could be very many years ago. So, and this could honestly be a form of that because he, Dan is wanting her removed from the team, her whole career taken because she didn't stand for the national anthem for, for, for just just putting her hand over her heart and just staring at the thing that that's enough to take him off just to, to want to remove her from the career and the thing is a lot of these uh people in the in terms of the political sphere uh, dan crenshaw sphere 
uh, definitely do not like cancel culture, but they they say things like this regarding the flag, you know, like with Donald Trump saying, what was it that he said? That, that you should go to jail if you burn the flag for one year. Like, that's a terrible idea. That's, 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 that's a terrible, that's basically nationalism. <laughs> like, if you want to punish people for daring to, 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 to disrespect any part of, of, of the country at all, that can be a form of nationalism. And we'll get into that a bit. In terms of me, how I feel about it, like, you know, I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm indifferent to it <laughs> in terms of this particular uh, single instance. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, the next statement I, I wanted to make, because I have some notes here that I wrote down, is that um, some people said uh, regarding this that, oh, uh, it's in the rule book of the Olympics that you're not allowed to make overt political statements uh, while the games are going on. Well, yes, but that's the games. This was a trial. This was a tryout to get on the team to compete in the games. That's different. You are allowed that there is no rule saying that you can't uh, do what something like what Gwen Barry did. It is if you compete in the actual games, but this was not the games. This was the trial uh, slash tryout. So that doesn't hold up. Uh, and the other thing is that what Crenshaw should have said is probably that, oh, well, isn't it great that we live in a country that so that is that that has a First Amendment right that is so great that she is allowed to protest her own country and she has the right to do so? That's more of, that would that's maybe not the best thing to say, but that would probably be better than than saying than saying remove her from the team you know should be saying like yeah it's 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 a great thing that she's able to do that she has the right to do that because that's 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 the rights we are afforded in america and it's great that we have that right that we can protest our own country or burn the flag if they wanted to so that probably again that's not maybe the bestest thing maybe to say there could be maybe other things to say that i'm not particularly thinking of right now but that probably would be a better statement than him saying to, to take her off the team um, the other thing is, is that Crenshaw doesn't seem to think about why she may be doing this, you know, because she actually states here why she didn't do it. She says she felt felt set up. And my guess is Mr. Crenshaw did not know that, did not even think about why she would be doing this or why she would be acting that way if, or that she is so arrogant. She actually says that she felt like this was a setup which can be kind of odd. We'll get into that, but let's read this. So Barry said she didn't intend to create a stir on Saturday. She said she was surprised the anthem was played after the hammer throw and had thought it would play later that night after all the competitions had been held. I feel like it was a setup. I feel like they did that on purpose and I was pissed, to be honest. I was thinking about what I should I do. Eventually, I just stayed there and just swayed. I put my shirt over my head. It was real disrespectful. I know they did that on purpose, but it'd be all right. I see what's up. Barry, who is black, she said she wants to advocate for African-American communities that have been subject to police brutality and systemic racism, but she said that was not her plan Saturday night. It really wasn't a message, Barry said of her actions. I didn't want to be up there. I felt like it was a setup. I was hot. I was ready to get my pictures and get some shade. So here's the thing. So it's like, okay, so that's why she felt like it was a setup. But one thing I will say is that I think like it should be known or like should be anticipated that the anthem is going to play after a competition because that's what happens in all the olympic sports anytime an olympic sport happens and like the the, the, the winners decided we have the top three whoever's first place their anthem is going to be played it happens all the time at the olympic Games. so i kind of don't understand why she didn't think that would happen after this especially if this has been happening even before her competition with other tryouts and other trials playing the anthem after the whole competition's over and the top three are decided, or however trials work. So it seems to me it's like, uh, really? You weren't expecting that? But, you know, that's just something kind of odd. It's like, I feel like it would be anticipated that the anthem would be playing. Anyway, uh, the other thing I wanted to say um, regarding this is that when the Olympics do start, I think it may be best that just athletes should avoid doing political stunts altogether not saying that they can't. If they want to do it, that's fine. But, well, I mean, it's a rule that actually they can't. So I guess if they do, that's they're going to face consequences. So I guess they're not going to anyway. But, you know, in general, in sports, you know, you, you don't want really political activism on the field. 
we've seen this happen before with with the NBA and other things. You know, people when people want to go to sports, they don't want to be taught politics or think politics. So you know, they, they like the movie theater, like I talked about in my last video. They want to escape the whole political sphere. A lot of them do. They want to escape like the problems of the world and things like that, and just escape for a couple hours. You know, and that's what that's what I feel like uh, a decent amount of movies do, and I feel like that's the same with sports. People who go to sports, they want to see people play, they want to enjoy their hot dogs and nachos, and they want to have a good time and see a good competition. You know, and same with the Olympics. You know, when I if I were to go to the Olympics, I don't whether it's right or left leaning or centrist, whatever. I you know I don't want any like political preaching to during an Olympic sport because that's not what I'm there to do. I'm there to see competition. You know, it's in that same realm. So, you know, while though I'm not against uh, you making a political statement in the sported area, I think it's just maybe best to not do it, especially if your goal is to make money or, or or get the audience on your side. Because again, with like the NBA, the ratings went down really low uh, this past year because of uh, all that's happened in the political sphere and them bringing them into the sport. And people being turned off by it. They're like, okay, I don't want to see this. I came for sports. I didn't come to see more political messaging. I want to get out of this. So I hope what I'm saying is making sense. Basically, you know, in the same way that people go to a theater because they want to be told a good story and escape, like, the political realm and not be politically preached to, uh, you know, whether it's right or left-leaning. Same with the sports. People want to go and have a good time. They kind of want to escape that. They want to see good competition and they want to have fun. So, yeah. So I think that basically wraps up this point. You know, it's kind of interesting to to see this uh, regarding um, some hypocrisy regarding uh, cancel culture, where people are against cancel culture, but when they do, when someone does something they don't like, they want them removed from the team. They want their career ruined. Um, so yeah, I think that goes gonna go ahead and wraps up this video. So thank you so much for watching. What did you think about this whole situation? Let me know in the comments. I would really like to uh, hear what y'all think. Uh, about this uh, whole Dan Crenshaw wanting Gwen removed from the team uh, story. So so go ahead and leave that comment. Again, if you like the video, leave a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. And I'll go ahead and see you in the next video. Take care.